back to the OPL, guys, where we are 1-1 one, one between the Chiefs and Trident. Trident coming up absolutely massive. Hello, I'm Jake Spawn Tiberi. This is Matthew Fish Stewart. That's Max Atlas Anderson. Get the pleasantries over the way nice and early, gentlemen, because <laughs> we have a game three to jump into. And what a third game it is going to be. I mean, who could have expected this apart from me, the Magic A Ball, and Rusty that would be going through a game <laughs> three tonight? I, I, didn't, I didn't actually prepare anything. I didn't pre I'm like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm so confident. <laughs> In my prediction this time around that I'm just I'm just going to wing it. It's going to be totally fine. We're not going to get to a game three because the Chiefs are going to get their shit together. No, it's not what happened. And it's just another case of where is the mid game for the Chiefs? For and one, where is their control? For once, I'm on the Magic 8 Ball side now. I really want Trident to win now. I think After Trident that. said, no, Magic 8 Ball <laughs> said 2-1 Chiefs. Did yeah. they? Yes. I yeah. thought he said 2-1 Trident. No. Oh, no. No one, on, no, one, no one believes that. Talking hard. about well, another no. member of the no Destiny doesn't have their hard. shit together. <laughs> However, guys, we did actually hear from Trident support during uh, the game. I think we have a little bit of a tweet to pull up from Jakey, uh, the Trident support. And uh, why are you rage blading at my marksman build, gentlemen? What's going on there, Atlas? Did you hijack Jakey's uh, Twitter there for a second? No, I didn't. And he's defending it. So, And look, hey, Edition did it again. And we saw that last team fight. He was bouncing around like a pinball, unable to be taken down by the Chiefs. So look, I, I won't fight it anymore. The rage blade, it's a thing on Callista. I'm excited. It's my favorite item in the game. Yep. I, of course, liked it before. It, it was, was good. actually good. But now it's still fine. So that's okay. So look, he built it. He won a game. Whatever. It's fine. I don't understand it still. I still don't understand this well, Rage Well, look, if you get to eight stacks, it's still a good item. Yeah, it's still a good item, but you don't use the so ability power portion. we have a contest at the moment. It's ask the desk anything. I'm actually extending something. <laughs> to the Trident lineup here. I want to ask you a question. What the heck is with the build? Tweet at me. Let me know so I can explain it on the broadcast because I want to be on your side. I think you've come up with some really great stuff at the moment. So we'll see whether that does work. But going into this game three, is this a case of what Legacy used to do to the Chiefs where take them late, we're going to team fight them? Is this a new Chiefs that we haven't seen before where they just have no idea? What is going on? Well, I'm a bit frightened. And the one thing that I'm really frightened about for the Chiefs now is the final game syndrome that they seem to get, seem to get themselves into time and time again, which is where they pick an early game comp because they want to be able to win their lanes, but then they're never decisive enough. They bring it to late game. They get inevitably outscaled. And, it, and it's game over from there. We saw it at winter. We keep seeing it time and time again when they get into these massive crunch moments. And we can't have that. We need to have the decisive Chiefs back. Apart from summer, where they picked a scaling comp and then Radio walked underneath a ribbon. So that's, that's a different that, story. That is a different story, <laughs> yes. So I, I agree with Atlas to a certain extent. I feel like Trident are going to actually try and take this to late game instead of Chiefs picking up an early game comp and going to late game by losing early instead. I feel like Trident, after the, the first and second game, being able to take the Chiefs to 40 minutes both times and both times being able to make the Chiefs look shaky. In fact, picking up game two as well. I think Trident are going to once again try and play a similar comp to what they've been playing in game one and two and make the Chiefs go to late game. I think this is all about impaired as well. We've seen his echo two games in a row. Both times, he was a pivotal reason as to why they won the game. So we need to make sure that he's not getting on these comfort champions. We know the Echo and the Nidalee are ridiculous in his hands. And I just want to see him be able to do this on something else. Was it also the Zillion pick? This is a pick I want to put under the microscope because it's gone yeah. through twice. And Wizard was arguably shaky in laning phase. And then we always know that this guy pulls it together. Very, very good uh, <laughs> mid-late game player. In the uh, river. In the river, yeah. Mm -hmm. The river lizard. Uh, yeah. But Zillion seems to be something that, you know, he can just play nice and safe on, farm up, and then play the facilitator role to Pac-Man, to addition, these two people that like to get in the face of the Chiefs. Yeah, and the other thing as well is that Zillion's really hard to play in the laning phase. And he wasn't behind by as much, nearly as much as he was on these strong laning champions. Of course, he averages like down by 25 CS on Corky, notably one of the best laners in the mid lane currently. So... To be able to play that well on the Zillion is massive kudos to the guy. This guy's obviously put in some time to this pick. So, yeah, maybe just get rid of it. Put him back to his other ways. And the other thing is maybe finding his feet in the OPL. I mean, this was a guy that was a rookie, had to step in halfway through a split, now stepping up huge for his team. The growth of Wizard has been, I think, one of the talking points of Trident. It's yeah. not just the growth of Wizard as well. It's the growth of Trident since Wizard has joined the lineup. They just look better as a whole since he's joined the team. And I liked what you mentioned as well, how he's playing that facilitator role. I think that's something that Chiefs definitely have to look at 
coming into game number three, because if they're going to allow Wizard to be the facilitator of the team, if they're going to allow him to make sure Edition and Pac-Man are stronger than they already are, it's going to cause huge problems. Money where mouth is time, gentlemen. I like to do this. It's going into game three. This is a zone that we love to go on the OPL. We've been there plenty of times this season, and you guys have got it wrong nearly every time. Atlas, who wins game number three? Whew. Well, I don't believe in no Swift and no clue. I think that the Chiefs <laughs> can turn it around. I think it's going to be Chiefs picking up the final game. I still think it's no sort of a no clue right now after that second game. So I think Trident going to pick up this game. Oh, split desk. There we go, gentlemen. So we will get <laughs> ourselves onto Summoner's Rift for game number three. Here is Pastry Time and Rusty to take us there. Thank you very much. So I would just like to point out Fish uh, did not agree with the Magic 8-Ball. So there's potential for him to yet again be usurped by a plastic oracle. My name is Julian Pastry Time Car. <laughs> Joining me here on the casting desk for our final game is Zach Rusty Pie. It's been a fun ride here. Back in week eight of the OPL Trident. Even though they have a loss in uh, the first two games they've played, I think the way they've been playing has been very consistent. Mm -hmm. They've definitely been cleaning up game on game. I just like the way they're playing. They've clearly figured out what works for them here. I think both teams have honestly worked out a strategy that's effective. I think Trident's is much more effective in that particular extent because they've come into this with overdeveloped champion pools to what we were used to seeing of them. So very impressive to see that coming into this. And I do agree with an extent to the desk. I think that you just ban the Zillion. He's, he's going to catch you when you fall, honestly, as a champion. And no matter what Trident do, Impaired doesn't even need to use his ultimate because he's got the Zillion there. I just think, get rid of that. Challenge Wizard. Actually yeah. take it to him because Cheese always wins lane. If he's on a champion that he's not comfortable with, he could falter. Yeah, and then let him snowball. I have to agree with that logic, but we'll see what the bans have in store this time around. Chiefs on the blue side, they do ban the Gangplank and the Zillion. So they'll get both of them out of the way. And Nivea, though, going to be banned again. And will they ban three times, Rusty? <laughs> Did miss one. We've got two so far. So looking good is there's the Lulu ban from Trident. There's a fool me once, shame on you. Yeah. Don't ban twice. It just makes no sense. Is well, that how that one goes? There no. we go. They nailed it. Nidalee going to be the final ban there from Chiefs. So denying that one away from both Spooks and Impaired, both good Nidalee players. This will leave Echo open unless Chiefs want to do something very extreme like first pick it. And I feel like Impaired just keeps getting these comfort junglers. Mm, yeah, I guess the big question is will Trident ban the Gragas? Or the Cogwell? It has to be the Cogwell, which yeah. means they don't need to pick the Echo. No. I mean, I don't think Chiefs would want to. I don't know how long it's been since Spooks played the champion, but... Callista. Callista's open. That's probably the biggest one. Take it away from Edition. It's a great champion for Radiant. And there it is. First pick. Yeah, they have to pick that. It's not that Edition's Rage Blade is like overwhelming. It's just that Callista is overwhelming because yeah. Jakey can afford to get caught. He can afford to be Braum, stand in front of his AD carry, and when it gets too hot, just pulls him out to safety. That's the Callista able to throw him back in or choose what they would like. It's just, it's just too versatile. Yeah, and we've seen how aggressive the Chiefs do like to be, especially with Callista. They do like to really get in the mix. Trident, though, are going to maybe slow things down, seeing a Gragas hover here for Impaired. So again, does have Echo open, but maybe wants to take more of a meta pick away from Spooks and give it to himself. His Gragas been okay when we've seen it, I think. It's definitely not the level of his cool, you know, cool. two strongest champions, but... Yeah, we'll no, see. the Gragas has been good, and this is the other question that I wanted to bring up is will they go for the Braum to yep. take that away from the Callista? Will they go for Corky to give Wizard something that he's comfortable with now that the two big champions from his kit, or from his pool rather, have been taken away from him? Well, right now it feels like they are going to go with, whoa, actually Echo, if they swap away from the Gragas, Braum, Echo are going to be the picks again. Yeah. It must be comfort for Impaired. There's no way to not take Gragas there if you're confident on it. Absolutely. I think. I honestly think Impaired's comfortable on both of them. I agree. But then you have to question what he's looking for when he goes for the Echo over the Gragas, even if it was a last-minute decision. Echo goes in very well, doesn't necessarily disengage for your team really well, which means with the Callista gone, there's a chance they run a self-sustaining AD carry that only needs the Braum for Peel, mm -hmm. and they needed more going in with the Echo, who is not just like, not that Gragas can't go in, it's that Echo is consistently going yeah, in. Yeah, he just always goes in. Yeah, and there's only in. And I think Impaired really showed up in a lot of those team fights on the champion. We know it's a cover pick for him. I think in your last game, try and stick to what works for the yeah. most part. They've already got two champions they've been playing in the last two games. There's Spook's going to lock in the Gragas, so not too surprising there. And with Braum taken away, Ejin takes the logical choice, and that's the Alistar. Yeah, and that was absolutely an expected draft yep. from the Chiefs, N knowing that when you go for the Echo, Spooks will get the Gragas. So that was expected. The question is where to try to go from here, because the Chiefs being predictable with that part of their draft have almost left them open to being counterpicked in lanes that 
I guess they weren't already picked, mm -hmm. left them open to be counterpicked. Well, so. There's also Corky still up yeah. if Trident wants it, so he's going to drop all the way down to their second rotation. But Edition is currently hovering Siva. Not a bad change. Not too bad. Did you get changed on this patch? I'm just, just keep bringing it so. back. 6 4 is when she got changed. I <laughs> okay. still don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> one, day we'll, one day we'll remember. One day. But I mean, we did, have seen Lissandra from him as well. There's the Siva going to be locked in. So Edition is going to take that champion to battle. We talked about Trident's engage. They've looked really good in the mid to late game when they've team fought the Chiefs. I like Siva. They're giving them a bit of engage options and going to just add to that here with the Lissandra pick for Wizard as well. Yeah, Siva's absolutely risen in popularity lately, solely because obviously on 6.4 you get the crit on the Ricochet. Mm -hmm. But the utility that comes behind the Siva is something that was lost and forgotten into the Abyss that has good. actually just recently come back, so oh. not so good anymore. Uh, able to let your team engage. So Braum can run at them a little bit faster. The Gragas usually is the other combo with it because you don't even need to flash Body Slam. When you've got the Sivers on the hunt, you can just walk at them yep. with your Dead Man's Plate and run at like 600 move speed and force their summoner spells from just the Body Slam. Yeah, well, Echo this time around, so I guess similar feel. But they are going to give uh, either, are going to give a flex pick solo land, I guess, because Pac-Man has played the Lissandra before. Wouldn't expect him to play it, but Chiefs on the blue side do have to reveal their solo lanes now. They've done a good job hiding them this far. But 10 seconds left, the Chiefs, they have some pretty tough choices to make here. It's just like Corky Poppy. Sure. It makes the most sense, depending on what Cheese wants. I think that's been the question. Cheese, maybe not feeling that comfortable. He's going to go back to the Corky. Chiefs take the picks, I guess you expect them to take. Yeah. But it feels like trying to be doing well with their comfort picks. Yes, no, so this entire Chiefs draft is just, what champions am I good at? Yep. What works together in a team composition? Just throw it all into a bag and shake it around and just give it out to the team as you would expect. So Poppy for the top lane, Alistar for Ejim as well, known as the Ejim Alley God. So yep. no surprise to see him on that champion. Spooks had a standout Gragas performance once he recently picked that champion back into the meta. Mm -hmm. Cheese is very good at leaning on the Corky. So they've they've got a lot of strength here, this Chiefs lineup. And the question is, is the Lissandra mid or top for Trundle? Yep, and that's what I really want to know. What's Pac-Man going to play? Is he going to stick be Trundle. to the Trundle and the split yeah. push? I feel I don't have as good follow-up options with the Lissandra than they do with the Zillion. Trident will at least have to go forward more often this time around rather than yeah, let yeah. Chiefs come to them and use more of their disengage qualities. But... I guess we'll see what happens here. I have to think the pick's going to be relatively predictable here for Pac-Man. It is going to be the Trundle. Once again, I feel like, oh no, he's going back to it. It is Nasus again. We've done it again. We have. Oh, man. I, I mean, mean, fair enough. A lot of faith in Pac-Man <laughs> to play this pick in a, a very cr a clutch game here. But, like, last time he picked it, the Poppy was banned. So there was a very obvious strategy that was that they were going to go Nautilus or something really tanky. Yep. And then just pick the Nasus into it where you can effectively scale. Poppy always does damage. Doesn't matter what you build on Poppy, you're always going to do damage. And I think there's a way to be much more oppressive on Poppy than you would have been on Nautilus, which is not by a large margin, but the thing is, after the first back, you're still strong on Poppy, whereas Nasus, we already saw, started to phase out the damage that he was taking. Mm -hmm. Poppy's still going to hurt. Second back, Poppy's still going to hurt. So I feel like there's a lot less of a window for Trident. Well, I'll have to see how it works out, because I have decided on their final picks here. Excited to see if Pac-Man can get it done on the Nasus this time around. I will say I think it's a bit better into Radius Champion. Yeah. So it does yeah. obviously feel like maybe that's the other reason. Yeah. But I feel like both teams got exactly what they want, to be honest. Chiefs, a nice well-rounded <laughs> draft with picks they comfy on. Trident, pretty much the same deal. Mm -hmm. We're going to run the comps back up each other. We split the first two games, so very hard to say who's going to win this last one. Yeah, definitely. But into the double AD as mm. well is that Nasus. It's not just the Kalista. You can use the Wither on a Corky. So much strength here with that pick. Certainly is. We'll see if Pac-Man's Nasus can get it done or if the Chiefs are going to win the game and the series. So use the hashtag CHF win if you're cheering on the Chiefs over in the Twitterverse. Or hashtag TRI win if you think Chiefs are on the verge of yet another upset. upset. And of course, don't forget to join the conversation. Use the hashtag IMOPO. Feel free to tweet at any of our casters or tweet at LOL, LOL underscore Oceania. We'd love to hear from you guys, especially on the broadcast. Love getting your tweets in. Always good to see. And this is a close series, I have to say. Been impressed with Trident week on week. Yeah. This would be a big boon for the team to pick up their win here. Honestly, has the plastic oracle spoken? That's true. The eye of truth. Well, <laughs> the Chiefs will win the game if the Magic 8 Ball has. But try to probably have other plans here. So we are going to move out onto Summoner's Rift for the final time this evening. And again, it's so funny to watch these two teams play three games because I feel like the team comes have been basically the same every single game. Yeah, and there's a lot of, 
I guess, questions that you need to raise. The Trident's team composition is still the very abstract one that's a lot different to what we're used to seeing of them, I guess. They've got the Sivir as AD carry, and what I like the most about that Sivir as AD carry is it lets you play Nasus top and it lets you play Echo opposed to the Gragas because you don't need Disengage for a Sivir who has the Spell Shield. You can actually just be in front of the Sivir and know that addition's going to be fine. I feel like in general... Trident are waiting the power of their team comp in the right places. Mm -hmm. So Pac-Man's been enabled, Impaired's been enabled. Let the rest of the map play a bit more utility. You've got a utility mid lane. You've definitely got a utility AD carry. And then play to your strong parts of the map. Try and get ahead. Take it late. And then use your strong team fighting with your point members, Nasus and Echo, to really get things going. Chiefs, on the other hand, though, what do we know them for? Immaculate leaning. Excellent mid-game pressure. Fortunately, strong macro game. It's fallen off just a touch. Yeah, it has. See if they can make a difference here, because their mid-games have looked real slow. And they That's didn't try and lane swap. No? I just really wanted to bring that up, because it's a Nasus once again. And instead of forcing him into double jungling for an extended period, he actually just gets to freely go to his lane right now. And that means that the Chiefs wanted standard lanes, because they want to empower Raider. Yep, and that's always going to be the Chiefs thing, I, have to, I feel like. Especially with someone like Kalista. Radio plays so aggressive on the champion as Wizards having a whole lot of trouble right now. Yeah, She's is just shooting him. Going a little too far on the Qs, and now Ejim's gonna go in for it, but Jakey's already tagged him. Ejim, he's in trouble oh, level one. Boomerang's down the heel's gonna get popped as now Radio gonna eat the exhaust addition, still getting aggressive because Trident beat them to level two. They absolutely did. They hit that level two mark, and only now can the Chiefs respond. Of course, the heal was used, but that was in response to the exhaust as well. And this is the lane that we've already seen struggling for Wizard just based off his level 1 positioning. And honestly, cheese. He has shown some weaknesses in his macro strategy, his positioning on the map. But when it comes to laning, he is still a freak. And there's Swiper with a huge trade onto Pac Man. Nasus doesn't really want to do anything other than farm here, but it's always dangerous to stand right in that little spot. Yeah. Poppy loves when you stand in front of that little ridge. And look how much this is already more than the Nautilus, right? Like yeah. Nautilus has got a lot of damage early. He's quite oppressive, but there's limits. And damage in the bottom side. Edition, good block there from Jakey. He's going to keep Edition safe, but the Rand still does good poke damage. Starting to run out of summoners here. Edition does have the heal, but Ejim's still ready with that Ignite. Spooks goes mid, does get the flash in. She's going to try and lock it down. Wizard. Forced to pop his own summoner spell. Yeah, and flash for flash is definitely worth it right now for Spooks because it also forces the teleport out of Wizard. You would have to imagine if he walks back, he's going to be so far behind in experience that he really will start to struggle. And look at Spooks. He's oh, going to go in right now. so aggressive from Wizard. Spooks is going to come in. Wizard can't cancel it. He eed. And I think he's just dead. He's already eed out of the way. He's going to get slowed down. The first blood goes to Cheese. He used the claw forward. That had to have been a misclick. Wizard goes down, and that was very smart from Smook. So you talk about the repeat offender when it comes down to blowing a flash, and it's very much assumed now in the current patches that someone's going to teleport to the minions because there's no reason to go to the turret. There's no reduced cooldown. And just like that, the advantage that the Chief's mid laner has got is ridiculous. Yep, and we talked about Cheese landing well and being a pretty good snowball player. He's got a very early sheen in this lane. And a 10 CS lead already. Wizards forced to go double Dorans just to keep some relevant stats here in this lane. This is going to be tough. And if Chiefs can convert this lane pressure into the mid game, maybe that's the boost the Chiefs need. But that's not even the only thing right now. Is Honestly, Trident should have looked for non-standard lanes. They should have looked to lane swap, and they should have looked to get the Sivir going and sacrifice the Nasus a bit. Because what we're looking at right now is comprehensive leads in every single respective lane from standard laning. And Spooks, now back in the bottom, very gank heavy, it seems like, in the early stages of this game. Impaired, though, more than happy to farm it out. And Spooks is waiting very patiently here for a potential gank. No flash, remember. He's going to try and though. start it. There's the flash in. Addition in trouble. Gets belly buffed instantly. That's going to force the flash out, but the Ignite's down. Addition is going to die. Raid here, able to collect him. Yeah, very, very easy stuff here from the Chiefs. They collect their mental, I will say. And this is Ejim with the flash pole. It's able to be coupled on Ejim, uh, sorry, Addition rather, actually could not use his spell shield. Yeah, to the top him. side though, started it in onto Swiper. The stun does land from the W. Swiper dashes out of the way. It is long enough to get him to safety. Swiper doesn't have to blow the flash. Spooks isn't done. This is rude. Jakey 
Gonna get himself bopped back in. Egypt, nice combo. Oh, just misses the pulverize. Trying to maximize the combo stun to get Raider closer, actually. Let's Jake flash to safety. Still the flash burnt. And that means that only one summoner is now available on this bottom lane. And look how zoned addition is. Yeah, I mean, everyone on Triton is getting pretty zoned at this point, except Nasus, who's playing pretty far forward. Addition can't walk near his no. turrets at this point, though. The thing is, Swiper still has teleport. He didn't actually recall after that gank. He just popped his corrupting potions because he was controlling top lane so handily. And honestly, this is again, it's going to come back to Trident. The drafting's fine. But they should be playing in non-standard lanes, which is why you now question the drafting for the Nasus almost exclusively. They're trying to get to late game. They're trying to team fight the later the game goes and be more comfortable doing that. But if they don't get there, at least somewhere close in gold, then they really will struggle. Yeah, and try and, uh, Chiefs, that's exactly what they want the game, or where they want the game to be going, excuse me. We know that they're a bit of an aggressive team. Definitely strong towards the 20 minute mark and they're going to have a big head start as Wizard doesn't even have his ulti impaired, he's going to see them but I think it's too late, Wizard going to get comboed up, the damage is in and she's able to get that kill now, Egypt's going to run out of the way, TP's there but Pac-Man just has to cancel. <laughs> oh my god, and impaired, it's even just unlucky timing, he actually used his E to get over the wall to the wolves and that just comes back to bite them indefinitely, the teleport even being cancelled is now another big cooldown not available to them. It also means that Swiper can walk back to top lane and use his teleport to affect the map somewhere else. So the Chiefs can now make a play for Dragon. And this is just a massive change on, this game, on the second and first game here for the Chiefs. And look at Wizard. He is so far behind in this game. 40 CS down yeah. at seven and a half minutes. Chiefs going to get his first blue. Wizard's still only level five. In fact, he's not even close to level six. That's how far behind he is. Just halfway there now. They have run a train on this mid lane, and poor Wizard keeps getting crushed. They absolutely have. They've actually just steamrolled over him right now. And the bottom lane's no exception in that respect either. It's still a big CS lead and a kill in favor of Raider. The only one that has been effectively neutralized is the top lane. So Pac-Man doing well to keep himself in this lane against the Poppy. And this is also why Trident didn't go towards any lane swaps, is they need this to happen. Swiper though, still applying good pressure and damage. Trying to keep Pac-Man off creeps where he can. And Impaired just hasn't been able to find those counter ganks. He's been farming up a storm. He's almost 20 CS ahead of Spooks. Hmm. This is one of those moments where I swear Cheese will just go in. Yeah. Thankfully, Wizard just hit level 6. Otherwise, I think that was a definite dive. Just quietly. Whoa. Knowing Cheese. <laughs> Spooks getting aggressive though. Is Ejim going to help him clear out a pink ward in the enemy jungle? Addition and Jakey again just zoned off the turret. Mm -hmm. Addition's going to keep falling further and further behind. He's already, what, 35 CS down? 25? Yeah. And this is... Math. It is 35. Spook's pressuring without actually ganking yeah. now. Like, whoa, look at this. Uh, Chief's trying to find Pac-Man. Was a little further back than I guess he thought. Cleanses off the wither. Diving. Keep shooting. They are going to go for the dive. Stun doesn't quite connect there for Swiper, and that's a mistake. Wizard's here. Locks up Swiper with the ulti. There's going to be a kill. Wizard just swoops in for a free Jeez, one. Cheese is a dud. But Impaired is here, so make a decision, Cheese, and make it quick. Maybe he should be done, because he's getting chased down. Does pop the Valkyrie, does have his flash. Impaired, they're going to chase in. Cheese really wants this kill. He's going to look for Wizard, but he's going to get blown up. Pac-Man gets him. And that even felt like just a mistake holistically from Cheese with their shock calling. Their jungler is seen and known to be bottom lane right now. And that was just a hyper-aggressive cross-map decision. Not done, though. Speaking of high progressive cross map decisions, Egypt fades called in onto Edition. Swiper going to move down and absolutely decimate his way through. But Edition with a nice spell shield pops everything to leave. Radia, though, going to make sure he dies. Now Jakey getting chased down as Radia gets the double. And that's two kills for Radia. Of course, Swiper with the teleport didn't have to use it earlier. Gets back to this lane very successfully in the bottom lane. And wow, the Chiefs, they, they make one mistake, right? But they pick that mistake up. They put that one in the bin. And they capitalize on the bottom side of the map once more. Again, talk about where the teams are putting their power. Trident still looking for that top side, particularly onto Pac-Man with a bit of help from Impair. But Chiefs looking a little bit in the mid lane early on, but completely bottom lane. Massive CS lead here for Radio. He is 2,000 gold ahead of Edition. Mm -hmm. And over 1,000 in the middle lane. Of course, this will be about 1,000 once this dies. So it just feels worse because the thing is, 
It's a Trinity Force power spiking champion in Corky. Whereas Wizard going for the Seeker's Arm Guard first. May have a needlessly large rod by the time he has a full Trinity Force. And that relative power difference between the two is more than just gold. More than just items. Corky works off levels. Corky works off items. And he's got a completed item that utilizes all of that. Well, Pac-Man is going to try and make some difference. He's got 140 stacks right now. He's a far cry away from where he got to in game number one. But may have to put an awful lot of trust in Nasus this, this time around. There's Cheese. Got three people in his lane, apparently. Mm -hmm. No cleanse, so has to Valkyrie away. Wizard does have the ulti to threaten, but I'm not too sure what Triton can try and get done here. As Cheese just fires some rockets into the back of Impaired. So they're just going to work bottom now, because Chiefs are actually the ones who initiated the lane swap now. They've, they've decided they want to open the map up more. They want to extend the gold lead they had by just immediately taking this top lane turret down. And they've got the Blade of the Ruin King, so nobody can meet these two as a duo. And so Trident's response, which is the right response, is to disregard them entirely. Swiper, though, he's going to defend it. He is. Minion waves there in time. Trident not able to finish that off, and Chiefs are working on a Tier 2 exactly. now. Mid lane's also very weak from all the pressure that Chiefs has been applying with a bit of help from Spooks. This tower will not fall, but it's going to get awfully low. Yeah, so the Chiefs... They get one tower for free. They're working towards the second, and now they're trying to catch Trident on rotation. Because they don't know Spooks is here. Well, Impaired takes the smart way around. Trident know that that part of their jungle, when it's dark, is not safe at all. Chief's not going to stay for too long. Addition's there, so that's sort of the wave clear for this lane, especially <laughs> with two AD items. But Viper and Pac-Man having a party. Ulti. Pac-Man gets moved back towards the base. Spooks going to get ultied up by Wizard, but he's going to ulti he's out. Impaired actually able to get the first kill. Might be able to chase for a second. Pac-Man here looking for the Wither. Cheese, though, does have his cleanse, and they can't chase under the tower. The Chiefs just keep making bad decisions, and it's tainting what is such a good game from them so far. That dive in the mid lane, no reason for Spooks to be there. He can just sit top, sit in the jungle, and let Raider and Agent put in work. Yep, and we talked about it before. Trident, the team that are behind, they're happy to make trades here. They're not the best trades, but given how the game has started for them, and it was not well in the bottom and mid lanes, They'll take what they can get here. Trident, they just want to push to that mid to late game and start those team fights. They're going to need gold to get there first, but Chiefs are giving them unnecessary exactly. advantages. Like they're not just trades. They're effectively even trades. So it's a turret for a dragon, and they get kills. So it's massive. And yes, Chiefs are about to now close in on that middle lane turret, get more gold back in their favor, and grow the lead further. But was it necessary to give up the dragon? Was it necessary to give up two kills or one kill, which just continues to happen? Feels like they're not putting enough care into this game. No. Not showing enough respect. And I do like the aggression from the Chiefs, but it does feel overly aggressive at times. Particularly from the Corky as Cheese. I think he's going back to some of his older habits, which is fun. Additions like playing the Lion King, by the way, right yeah. now. And everything the light touches is yours. Yep. <laughs> It's so whatever the vision reveals is yours. Well, right now, it's not Radio. a lot. Radio is an awful lot of vision, no. Like, look at the mini-map. The, the pride lane's <laughs> very small for addition at this point. You see that one choke point? That's yours. That's yours. See this nexus? That's also yours. <laughs> That's it. Well, probably going to try and earn a little bit more land. Going to wave clear out that bottom side, though. Impaired on the side of the map, unfortunately. So, no real chance for a team fight. Chiefs instead consolidate, move back to the blue buff. Are able to take it for themselves. Cheese actually going to get it. So nice steal there. His radio is still playing up, but he's waiting for a few friends to join him, I think, as the pressure is continuing to grow here from the Chiefs. Absolutely is. And it's no surprise that radio getting the kills actually is directly proportionate to the amount of aggression that they show on the map wherever he is. They've got the top lane turret, and there's a big stack of minions going there. So I wouldn't expect the Chiefs to fight within the next 30 seconds. But the way that Radar is posturing almost insinuates that they will, right? Yep. I mean, Radar's playing like Spooks is in his back pocket the whole time. And to his credit right now, he is. He actually is. But yeah. I feel like Radar would be playing the same way anyway. As trying, to, trying not to get too zoned off these turrets. Addition, trying to keep what land he does own. But the Chiefs are invading it. Clister, mm. unfortunately, can't get too aggressive. But Trident do have to all be here together to wave clear pretty much. So it's really just Pac-Man that's buying some time here. Wizard can't stay here. Cheese will eventually wear down this turret with the Trinity Force. 
Yeah, that's the trick, though, is Cheese is the one showing signs of overaggression. And yeah, he can definitely still control the 1v1. He has the cleanse available to him, and the fact that he's got the item advantage is big. But they send a second person to deal with him because it needs to be a 2v1 to get Cheese away, which gives more time to the bottom lane of the Cheese. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the Cheese gold is just ridiculous at this point. Cheese still firing away. Does do decent damage to that turret. Walks past the pink wall, but decides the Raptors are more up his alley. Probably takes about as many shots to kill them at this point as he is going to clean the camp out. But 5-3 up and kills for the Chiefs. It really is that turret advantage that's propelling them forward here. Mm -hmm. They have a massive gold lead. Yeah, and this is a very big lead at this time in the game. And just came down to how effectively they played their laning phase. It's the one thing Cheese really does excel at. But this time around, all three lanes are excelling at this. And honestly, they just they tarnished what was going to be an immaculate performance with three errors. And that are the three kills that Trident have. Well, I have to see if Chiefs can play in the middle of the game a little bit cleaner. Certainly on the best off to the best possible start, I will say. So I have all the tools to be able to do so. 7k up already in this game at 17 minutes in. That's a pretty ridiculous scoreline. They're going to take the Rift Herald now as well. There's barely any tier 2 turrets left to take. Zimpair does check the pit, but isn't going to be able to steal it this time. And he's going to go over to Radiant. We will get the buff as well. As Cheese with the package moving topside. Seems like Chiefs, again, just want to keep applying that pressure. <laughs> Everybody loves Ray Damon. You know? Yeah. That skit show that was on yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just what it feels like. Honestly, he's getting everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. And it's intentional because he's basically just showing off his skill. Coming into game three, this is the experience that the Chiefs have once more. Is they didn't just come into game three off the back of a defeat and say, oh, well, we better play passive, better scale towards late game. Mm -hmm. They put on a clinic. They did. It's been the best early game for them so far in the series. Just can they carry that through the rest of this game? We're starting to get to that yeah. precarious 20-minute mark. Trying to, trying to stop the bleeding. But an awful lot of blood spilt already. As Egypt is going to clear that ward out. Try and again, can just turtle up, get the wards down where they can in defensive positions. Chiefs have lit up the map and taken it over, though, as Pac-Man. We do have an update. 246 on the stacks. He's a long way off. Absolutely. Really doing damage. Off. But he is stacking. Yeah. And that's just the pressure that Swipe is putting down on him. Mostly clearing with the E, I believe. Tormenting that soil. Or is that Morgana? It, it doesn't even Morgana. matter what it is. It's the tormented it soil. It is fire, now. technically. <laughs> Spiritual fire. Spiritual? Spirit fire. fire. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, look. What a name. <laughs> Not Sp fire. Spirit fire, thankfully. <laughs> Spirit Not puddle spiritual fire. is what that is. Spirit puddle. Spirit fire. Where's the fire? We're going to have to check in with NASA C now and see. I don't know. There we go. Look, wait till he uses it. I believe in you, Pac-Man. Oh, he's killing all the minions. Come on, use it now. You have oh, to. You're getting pressured. Oh, honestly? You know what? Maybe we have a dive instead. Why are they diving? <laughs> <laughs> Bad, they're going to get out of the way. Wizards already used the E. He does have ulti. So the Chief's going to collapse this four. Impaired going to eat huge amounts of damage there from that Corky. That's no Infinity Edge just yet here for Cheese. That's just the Trinity Force and a pickaxe. Mm -hmm. Sork Shoe's helping out, but Impaired real squishy right now. Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, Impaired's struggling, and it's the Runic Echo's build, so naturally he's going to be taking a fair chunk of damage when behind. Has managed to farm quite effectively, though, to be sizably ahead of Spooks, honestly who has spent most of his time protecting his team as they win lanes. So stylistic differences between these junglers right now. Unfortunately, you can't farm when the team is struggling. No. I mean, not without sacrificing something, and it has been the loss of pretty much every lane for Trident that has been the sacrifice to see if Impaired Zeko can once again lift his team out from a very big deficit. But the Chiefs, they have other plans. They'll take the Dragon down. Continue growing an absolutely absurd gold lead. There are 8,500 gold ahead now. Closing quickly yeah. in on 10k. It's getting pretty close to almost irreparable amounts of lead that they're about to secure themselves. That Baron being available right now as well. You have to remember they have a Callista. So if they ever decided they need to make an on-the-fly decision to just break the game completely out in the open, then they could look towards that, which is why Trident already have a ward there just in case, because you can't trust the Chiefs when they're this far ahead with a Callista on their team. I would imagine Raiders like, we can Baron. Yeah. Like, immediately. I have bad news, by the way. 
Pac-Man's not going to be using Spirit Fire anytime soon. Well, he's not going to be when no one else is he here. He's just chilling together. with the wave, getting as many sacks as possible. His credit, he got almost every single minion in that there it wave. Is. How oh. is that? Okay, does that look like fire? Uh, I didn't say it did. I'm just telling you what the ability is called. What a time to be alive. It's somewhat fiery. You know what it kind of feels like? It's like you spilt a whole bunch of corrupting potions in a circle. That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you know the little animation when you yeah. hit someone? Yeah, that's what it yeah. looks like. It kind of does feel like... Can you like imagine? He just like rocks up. He's got like a whole utility <laughs> belt full of potions. He just like... The like, Batman makes of a League of Legends. Makes a little circle and just like shakes them all in. <laughs> oh, man. Chiefs, here we go. Well, the Baron you expected is actually the move here. Egypt finds one. It is Jakey. Well, I said, but into the team. They want to kill. Fate's called Pop, though, impaired. Now on the front lines, has to ulti out. He will, but he's not going to get too far. Poppy actually, I think, disrupted him there. Yeah. Nice kill, as Cheese claims it. And so they force a kill out of starting the Baron. They are still looking towards this Baron, though. They don't have teleport, but Pac-Man does. At the very least, they oh want to force Pac-Man. Jakey took so much damage from this Corky. Cheese is going to zone them up by himself. Ooh. In fact, almost kills Jakey. I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't get a flash rocket there from Cheese to try and secure it. But the Chiefs, they are going to be able to tank this up. They've got enough spears in it by now. And they will claim the Baron and officially a massive... Oh my god, did they miss that? Yeah, they got it. They did Don't get worry. it. Don't worry. The render was not enough. Pac-Man doing work in the bottom side as well. We'll get a tower. So only 8,000 gold down now for Trident. I'm guessing the Baron was hitting Callista as he tried to render. Ah, uh, well. The well. Chiefs, they get themselves a pretty ridiculous lead off the back of that Baron. And... The reason that it's ridiculous is they've now got the buff for an extended period of time where they can start breaking structures and try to uh, at least try to break the base of Trident. And that's where the game is completely open. If Trident can hold their base, they can hold the fort down, they can go full CLG EU, there is a chance. But with this buff, it becomes infinitely harder to do. Yeah, you can see the gold there on your screen. It really is the AD carry and mid laner that have absolutely... Outrageous advantages. Almost 5k for Radiant. Right Impaired has the same gold as Wizard End Edition. Wow. He has the same amount. Like, that's absurd. The only person who's farming is Pac Man, it's because he can. And he's got the Zerot Portal now for a bit of extra pressure. But I'm not sure those little minions are going to hold the fort for long enough. It's tough. It's just real tough. Well, Chiefs, we're going to try and close this game out in style. Cannot be happy. That they had to go to three games, especially given how long the first two games were. They got a lead in every single game, it felt like. This yeah. one is the biggest one of all. And it's just a matter of trying to close cleanly. As there's really only these five turrets left. And I like the lane setup they have at the moment. They've got the floater in Spooks on this Gragas. They've got Raider and Egym in the top lane. And then they've got Swiper in the bottom lane pressuring. Cheese can well and truly still win the 1v1 and poke this down. So if someone ever rotates mid... They do have Spooks floating between to support him. If they don't, then this three man in the top lane can do exactly this and chip away. And it's a matter of sooner or later, they will break the turrets. Yep. The question is when and how many. Wizard does not go in. He threatens, but that's going to give Chiefs the knowledge that they can go in. Jakey going to be the target. Impaired trying to turn this one around. Egypt's deep in the team. And so is Spooks. Wizard ults himself. Spooks looks like he's going to die here as Wizard does take him out. Egypt now going to get aggressed on his radar. Got all the way out. And that's two kills for Trident, but Chiefs are going to break the base. Yeah, and that's two turrets broken. Of course, Pac-Man is pretty quick next to these broken turrets with the Zerot move speed. No inhibitors down, but it is still two inhibitor turrets that have been taken. So the Chiefs can rinse and repeat with the strengths they've just found and try again once they respawn. Trident, honestly, they're just stuck being reactive, not proactive. Yep. And that's their real downfall right now. I mean, they just have to keep farming. Still so far behind. The Chiefs, though, get a little sloppy. There's a couple members and the ba and Baron buff on a few of them as well. Buff it's is like, honestly, it's just small things, right? Like, yeah. They don't need to be doing these and making these mistakes. They didn't need to dive top. They had mid winning. They had bot lane pressuring. And Pac-Man teleported. So they overcommit. And they don't need to overcommit. And I'm not sure if it's a lack of respect or a lack of actual effective decision making because it's still kind of mid game. It's just very curious. I feel like the Chiefs, after the first two games, are just telling themselves play aggressive, play aggressive, play aggressive. And then you tunnel on playing aggressive. Yeah. And you start making mistakes in that direction. So aggression's nice and all, but calculated aggression may be missing here for the Chiefs. To, to their credit, though, they are very far ahead in this game. So. 
the philosophy changes at least giving them a nice early lead. As we do have an update on the Nasus, 400 stacks has been reached. Starting to get into scary territory here. Absolutely getting the scary territory. It's the items as well as cheese. That was the Civerol. That was a fast Nasus. Yeah. <laughs> Nasus next to a dead turret with a Civer ultimate on him is scary. But that was also the Civer ultimate, as we mentioned, down. And the Chiefs not respecting anymore. The Chiefs are just going to play it slow. Compared trying to find an engage. Gets a good parallel. Barely missing the stun onto Cheese. Swiper, though, gonna get chunked out as Impaired. Forced to ulti back in. Grag Assault gonna separate the teams as Cheese just firing away with a bit of help from Radia. Braum's gonna go down. Swiper will zone them off by channeling the ulti. Trident lose one, and they lose the mid in here. Top's not gonna last long. Yeah, it was just a matter of when they were able to break the base. They work around spells. Oh, and good play, but Wizard's able to ulti himself in time. Egypt finds a miracle engage almost. But they do get what they want. Pac Man still chasing. He's pretty strong. Try don't need to fight. So they're going to have to try it. Wizard doesn't have a flash. Can't move forward for it. She's going to get low. And he's going to go down to impair. But Radia still firing away. Wizard's going to die to Swiper off the other end. Radia. And they just don't have enough. No, they do. Radia actually gets shut down there by the Nasus. Try to do what they have to do and fight. Impair jumping in onto Swiper. Now Pac-Man's going to slow him down. This 1Q is going to hurt. Pac-Man needs a little bit more. Impair's back oh in. Oh, my God. Swiper's still living. But there's another wither. This Q should seal up. Pac-Man gets the stacks. <laughs> they get the kill, Pac-Man, and the rest of Trident. That is four members dead from the Chiefs. But at what cost, Pastry Time? Because it is still a ridiculous gold lead in favor of the Chiefs. No matter how big the gap is or how much it's closed in that last team fight, that's two inhibitors down, one lane left for the Chiefs to target. And sooner or later, those super minions will barrel into the base and cause Trident all of the havoc in the world. Well, Chiefs at least get some recalls, go back. Still ahead and kills Trident. Like, again, this is just perplexing. That's all I'm going to call it's it. It's just sloppy. That's what I think. Absolutely. A little sloppy from the Chiefs, but they're still in the lead. High school cafeteria, man. It is a bit. Food fight broke out. Meatloaf everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad time. Straight on top of the corrupting potion. Talking about the food meatloaf, right? <laughs> Yeah. This thing is pretty messy too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Chiefs really only have one obvious spot to go. Baron is up in 50 seconds if they fancy it. Dragon's also up if they feel like they need it to help their siege just a little bit more. But probably don't need it. Gonna look to try and siege bottoms instead. Yeah. And it's the only place still left open. Although Pac-Man to his credit, with his rock portal, is making it work in the top lane somehow. Yeah, it's holding on for dear life. Unfortunately, the Zerot portal against Super Minions has this quirk where eventually there'll be too many Super Minions. And what it actually does is cause a super ripple effect where it comes back at you three times as strong. Because all you've done is delay Super yeah. Minions, not kill them. So you just get a super, <laughs> super wave. Yeah, you get the super wave. Well, Pac-Man, I guess, has to go trim that. So he will be there. Swiper, again, going to channel the ulti, try and zone them away. He tried it once more, going to try and start the fight. Egypt goes in, but he's already popped that ulti. And again, it's a little too much there. The Fate Skull is going to pull him out. Impaired and Pac-Man are chasing. Pac-Man's going to get knocked up, though. They're going to turn their attention on to oh, him. Nasus cast. gets the ulti. Huge ult there from Spooks. So Cheese combos in. And the damage is maybe done. Impaired He's going to pop the ulti and take out Egypt on the backside. But Radia going to chase him down. He gets himself a triple kill. And the Chiefs handily win that fight. Four for one. And as expected, based off the early game, the Chiefs come back and they win another successive team fight. Spooks with the keg this time around, though, the biggest deal in regards to winning that one. And here we go. The Chiefs, they got all the time in the world. Yeah, Jakey just doing a dance. I think he knows the game is up. Trident are going to fall here as the Chiefs are able to take a very swift sub 30 minute victory and claim the series 2 to 1. It was a long, well fought fight, but the Chiefs do win in the end and a much cleaner last fight to round things out. The Chiefs definitely rocky. They're up and down, a roller coaster, yeah. if you will, but. They end where they always want to, on yeah. top with the win. Trident came in with a strategy. They yep. implemented the strategy very well, and you have to give a lot of commendations to them up until game three as well. They look like they could have maybe taken out this series, and it's the faltering of Trident that continues to happen. They just, honestly, they chose standard lanes, and they chose the Nasus to be in standard lanes. Ended up hurting them. Certainly did, but we are going to break down the series there as Chiefs have won. We're going to get a little bit more there from the analyst desk. Let's go see the boys. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. A very convincing win in the end from the Chiefs, but we have to say not a convincing series whatsoever. And I want to start actually on Trident 
because they once again tried to run the Nasus comp. A little bit of, I guess, a different feel this time with the Sivir. A bit more of engage for the Nasus to go with as I nearly kill an 8-ball and myself at the same time. <laughs> uh, what did you make of the game, Atlas? Like, what, the compositions, I guess, at the start. Look, I, 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 it was another cute comp, is what I'd like to say, because the on the hunt plus Nasus, you know, trying to avoid the kite ability of the champion does seem good on paper, but we saw what happened in that early game. I mean, the, the fact that Siva got zoned away from a minion wave just was irrelevant for the entire game. Fell behind about 60 CS at 13 minutes, which was in fact half of what Radia actually had. So it's just a ludicrous lead in the bottom lane. Not to mention Wizard, completely different performance from the guy. His Lissandra has looked shaky almost every single time. And it just wasn't the zillion that we were expecting. And I completely agree with Atlas. The bottom lane and middle lane just went fell too far behind. And having a Nasus in the top lane combined with an Echo in the jungle just gives you no room to capitalize on the fact that there's, be there's no pressure top lane. Okay, so this is where I want to go. Was it actually Trident? Because, you know, the zillion was banned away. They weren't able to pick that up. Or was it Spooks? Because for the longest time, and I respectfully disagree, people think that Spooks is kind of the weak link of the Chiefs. This game he put on a clinic. Yeah, certainly did. He helped bottom lane get ahead very early, blew the flash very early on Wizard, and returned for another kill mid lane. He single-handedly snowballed the Chiefs early on in the game. That being said, this is exactly what Spooks has been bred to do. Ever since he joined the Chiefs, they have been one of the most powerful teams in the league. Playing from ahead is what this guy's job was for two years. So, of course, he's able to do it. And it felt like he was back in his comfort zone. Definitely able to get the work done. And it worked perfectly for the Chiefs as well. Being able to get their lanes ahead early meant that there was no pressure on their laners to make sure they are able to stay ahead. And it also made sure the Chiefs were not going to throw it like they did in the previous game at Baron. Yes, they made a couple of sloppy mistakes here and there, which I still think were unnecessary from the Chiefs, but they were still able to stay ahead for the majority of the game. Yeah, for the first... Six kills, Spooks was 0, 1, and 6, so involved in all of them everywhere on the map. Need to see more of that from them. But I actually want to pull up a stat for you right now because the Chiefs have lost 12 games, domestically this is, in their history. They've lost 8 games this split, and they have lost 5 games in the last 8 days. I just want to let that sink in for a little bit. 12 games since they were formed in 2014 for the Summer Promotion Tournament. This is a team that has always been... I, I call them the Goliath in the OPL yeah. scene. And there was no David for a very long time, Atlas. And yet this team is struggling at the moment for some unknown reason. Some unknown reason. Is it really that unknown, Swan? <laughs> I, I, you said you don't subscribe to the No Swift and No Clue. I don't subscribe to it either. I don't think that you they take have... one piece out of the five best individual players domestically, it should not make this happen to a team. Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't make this happen to this extent, but you're not expecting them to have the same level of cohesion that they had before, especially without their captain in Swiffer in the mid lane. So the thing that I'm looking at is the fact that it's taken them so long and that it feels like they're actually on the decline. That's the ridiculous part. I mean, we're expecting Cheese to come in for there to be some growing pains, but then they'd move on, move forward and get things together. The fact that it's a downward trend is the biggest problem. Chiefs really look lost, like we said earlier. They have no d direction. They look indecisive in most of their matches. And you mentioned this, there was no David for a very long time. And now it just seems like every single match they go into, even against Trident to a bottom of the table, feels like that's a David that is going to be able to take down Goliath once again. And it just feels like this indecisiveness and the lack of direction from the Chiefs is really costing them in the OPL. Well, at least today, David did win. However, guys, we have a heck of a lot more OPL action coming your way. Tomorrow, we are going to see Sin take on Infernum. And then our OPL legend match between the two teams with Gaming Houses. Legacies will take on Hellions before Wednesday night. Direwolves will round us out against the Vanguard. However, that is all we have time for tonight. On behalf of myself, my analysts, the casters, as well as the production team, thank you very much for sticking around. Putting up with my bad English. We'll catch you tomorrow night. <laughs>